details. Mm -hmm. What about, is this also a fine detail, the protein timing? You know, there's, yeah. a, I, you've, it's just, it, the, probably one of the most common questions. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Should I split my 1.2 grams into point, you know, 3.4 <laughs> yeah. grams per kilogram? Or yeah. is there, is the, is the stimulus, and we'll talk more about why protein's a stimulus for, sure. for muscle, you know, mass, yep. but, yep. you know, is it, does it have to be higher? Or? Yeah. Great question. Um, I, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing as, as much from evidence as I can here in a little bit for my sort of own sense of, you know, take this with a grain of sand. I think the way that your, your body is set up and your muscles in particular prefer to be fed regularly. So pulsed, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack or whatever it is. And so when I'm talking to athletes who are the creme de la creme, pro level, Olympic level, uh, I get to talk to them only every now and again. And I always say, you know, you guys are clearly like we've, we've skimmed off everybody who is sort of a mere mortal like me. Um, and now we've got these, these elite specimens and they probably should eat that way. Now I appreciate that sometimes training is difficult for them to do and everything else like that. But I think they could benefit from even distribution, whether it's a huge effect. Uh, I think for most mere mortals, um, it's not a big deal. I think if you're the top level athlete and you're probably looking to medal or you know win this or win that, then maybe some of those small differences, that's the sort of the, the, the last little part that you need to turn the dial that is the margin of victory at, at the top level. So we talk about even spacing of protein. Uh, I think for most people, uh, it's not that big a deal. Um, there's also the timing with respect to exercise, and I, I lived through that craze. Uh, not as big a deal as we once thought. So it's really about the total amount of protein you're gonna get in the day. And then the next one would be, you know, even spacing. And I'd say, yeah. And then the next one would be sort of protein quality where, you know, we get into some of the more nuanced talk about protein. And then you can dial it down from there. Uh, most people I talk to, uh, I just say, you know, do you go to the gym? And they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, how many times? They're like, well, you know, once or twice. I said, maybe you could go two or three times that would probably be a much bigger benefit than I need to divide my protein three times across the day, so. Good point. Yeah. What about 65 years and older? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think you're, this is where what we call a skewed protein intake and the traditional intake is lowest at breakfast, moderate at lunch, and then most of it at dinner. I think it's probably correct to say that that first, that breakfast time meal, you could really stand to push the protein intake a little bit higher. Most people say heart healthy breakfast, whole grains, that sort of thing. And so that's where they focus. Um, when we've looked at intakes of, uh, of older, particularly older women, uh, they, they consume a ridiculously small amount of protein at breakfast. And I think they could handle you know, some Greek yogurt. We, we take eggs off the dirty list and we say, it's okay to eat an egg, good, high quality, nutrient dense source of protein. And then they say cholesterol. I'm like, probably not as big a deal as you've been taught. And you know, you're 85. I'm like, have an egg for goodness sake, you know, <laughs> or, or a glass of milk. And that's, you know, most people say, well, there's not much protein. And I say, you're right, but it's more than the six to eight grams, you know, most of which comes from wheat gluten, which is, you know, it's not a particularly high quality protein uh, that these, these older folks should uh, probably aim for. And it doesn't necessarily, again, have to be enormous amounts. People say, what about protein supplements? I'm like, very convenient. Uh, if you can't do it with food, absolutely a protein supplement's probably useful. Um, but, you know, whatever suits your, your lifestyle. But, but I do think that older people, particularly, instead of having the skewed distribution, could stand to sort of have a more even distribution throughout the day.